Okay, so chat GPT, Google, and most of American big tech thinks that they have an unbeatable lead in Gen AI. What if they're totally wrong? What if their AI models give them no real strategic advantage? And what if their methods are too costly? What if they're too caught up watching Elon Musk try to buy OpenAI for a crazy sum of $100 billion and are simply too caught up to realize that China, Europe, and India have the opportunity to catch up and be able to produce AI models that are just as good for a fraction of the cost? Now, I have watched many people on the internet speak very passionately about this topic, but without the backing of any facts, leaving you unsure what to believe. So in this short video, I'm going to try and make it simple. I'll try and tell you the facts and together let's analyze them in an easy, logical manner and come up with some very unbelievable conclusions. Okay, but before we talk about why chat GPT in America might have got AI wrong, we first need to understand the AI market today and figure out who's really winning. Next, we need to understand the true cost of AI, which left me pretty shocked once I really understood it. And third, whether it's possible to even have a competitive advantage at all in this field. So let's start by talking about the market today. The AI market is basically made up of three things. There's the GPU chip makers that help efficiently run Gen AI queries. There's the companies like OpenAI that have large language models and platforms like ChatGPT that can process these queries using the compute power of these GPU chips. And then third, there's the services players that use these models and platforms to deliver specific services for you or your business. Now the GPU market is incredibly dominated by one single player, Nvidia, that is more than 90% of the market. There's AMD lagging way behind and after that there's really no one else of note. This is what's led to NVIDIA's incredible rise over the last year to become the most valuable company in the world. This might change in 2025 though, as many companies like the British chip maker ARM and many Asian and Chinese chip makers like Huawei are racing to launch their own competing chips with NVIDIA, which they claim will be better and much cheaper. But more on that in a minute. Next is the market for large language models and platforms themselves, which is dominated by a few players you'll recognize like OpenAI, Google, Microsoft, and Amazon. Now there are obviously smaller players like Anthropic and Hugging Face, which make highly specialized models that all of you know are growing thick and fast as well. And then the third part of the market are the services offered by companies which sit on top of these LLM models, which is an incredibly fragmented market with everyone from large players like Accenture to small startups offering Gen AI based services. Now let's zoom in a bit on the market for large language models and come to the second topic, which is the true cost of processing any Gen AI query, literally every single thing that you and I ask ChatGPT, because that's the secret that's allowing other countries to catch up with America. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. If you haven't given it much thought, you might assume that the cost of an AI model is similar to other software, where it costs millions, sometimes billions of dollars to develop. And then the companies which successfully develop and scale have a winner take all situation because the cost for each use of that software is almost nothing. And now they've crossed that massive hurdle of building this huge, enormous thing, which takes tons and tons of money and time, and they can scale it almost at no cost rapidly and indefinitely. A good example of this is Google search. Google was one of the earliest players to develop a search engine, which cost billions to make. But once they made it and got users used to it, they're practically impossible to beat. Not even someone with the war chest of Microsoft and who was the first to put AI into the browser managed to make any visible dent. Now, the reason why someone else can't just come along and defeat Google at developing a search engine is that the cost to develop one and then scale it to a reasonable amount of consumers is just too great. It's kind of like two people running, one up a hill and one down a hill at the same time. I mean, it's obvious who's going to win, right? But the game is totally different for Gen AI. It's now being revealed that the cost to develop Gen AI isn't actually that much, but the incremental cost to use, which is each query that you run is actually really, really high. Now, this may not seem obvious at first because OpenAI, Meta and others have spent a ton of money building and training their LLMs. Meta, for example, spent an estimated $60 million to train their Llama 3.1 model as per The Economist. But the Chinese model DeepSeek did the same thing for less than 10% of the cost, just $6 million. And that's not even the craziest example. Researchers at Stanford are now claiming they can do this for $6? 
So the next time you're at a Starbucks or a Pret, look at your coffee and sandwich and know that you're eating the cost of training your own AI model. Now caveat, this is not exactly comparing like to like because Stanford did build on an existing AI LLM model from Alibaba. But the main reason that they were able to do this so much cheaper wasn't actually the fact that they started with another model. It was because they took a completely different approach where the secret sauce was using a much smaller data set combined with much longer reasoning times. Let me explain. First, they only trained their model on a very, very small, very focused sample set of data, which was tuned to the specific problem they were trying to solve. And then they forced the model to think longer and longer every time it took. Now, in the case of the Stanford S1 model, they were training it to score higher on a math exam. So they only trained it on a very small data set of maths questions. And also they gave it access to all existing reasoning and logic from models that you and I use every day, like Google Google's Gemini. Only ask of this model was to focus it on these specific questions and only the part of the reasoning that other existing models can't already do. And then every time that the model said it was done thinking, they did something that OpenAI and others had never done before. They told it to go back and think some more. And its results were incredibly better. The $6 model when released could beat OpenAI's $60 million model at taking the same math test. Thinking four times as long allowed this model to score over 20 percentage points higher on the math test. And being forced to think 16 times as longer takes this model from being unable to score even one mark on a really hard math exam to getting a score of 60%. Now this sounds easy enough, but what you may not have realized the thinking harder is directly proportional to cost. And hence, whilst training the model costs maybe very little, running it every time with these long thinking times actually costs a lot more. So now let's step back. What does all of this tell us? I think it tells us three things. First, I think that overall AI models are getting better at exponential speed and also getting exponentially cheaper to build. Second, AI models may not cost a lot to build anymore, but good models cost a lot to run. And hence, unlike Google's search engine where one winner takes all, in this market, we'll probably see many players who dominate their own specific niche use cases with models that are trained specifically for those problems. And hence, a lawyer, a doctor, and a student will probably use completely different AI models. And third, I think this means that there's not such a big first mover advantage in AI like we might have imagined. And that means all countries and companies can still invest to train their own AI models to solve very specific, maybe even very local problems and even in their local languages. But wait, how does this really give these countries an advantage? The crazy part here is there's a story behind all of this, which is probably worthy of an Oscar nominated movie with America trying to block access to the fuel needed to train these AI models, which is the chips and other countries finding a way around it. So let me know if you'd like me to cover that in my next video or any other topics. And thank you so much for your love and support to a small creator like me. See you soon.